Um, so hi everyone, welcome to the Women's History Month interview series uh, hosted by Faye and Superposition Fremont. Uh, today our guest is Judith Smith, who is one of the founders and the director emerita of Axis Dance Company. Hi, Ms. Smith. Um, Hello, how are you? Good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yeah. Um... Well, I am living in Oakland and um, I'm probably the most known for being a founding member of Axis Dance Company. And Axis, for people that don't know, is also based in Oakland. And we are a contemporary repertory company um, comprised of dancers with and without disabilities. Um, we started in 1987, which is a long time ago. And um, we were one of the first companies in the world to do this kind of work. Um, and that's been pretty much my life's work in addition to doing the axis and um, you know, building the company and being the both executive and artistic director for years. I also am a total nature net as you might be able to tell from my background um, for this Zoom call. I grew up in Colorado and um, I, uh, now I, what you can't tell is that I'm in a power wheelchair. I am disabled. And I was disabled in a car accident when I was 17. Prior to that, I had expected to have a career showing jumping horses. That's my first passion. But I do love nature and I spend as much time out in nature as I can now, hiking and I'm helping a friend start um, a birding for all program so that we can get more disabled people out into the world. Um, I spent a lot of time getting people into the dance studio to dance and now we're going to get them out of the dance studio and out into nature. All right. Yeah. Um, was there anybody in your life that um, influenced you to start dancing and do the work that you did at Axis? Yes, actually, um, I moved to California, to the Bay Area, when I was uh, 23 years old. And I met a woman named Gail, who was an improvisational mover. Um, and she was one of the first people that worked for me. I do use personal care assistance. And she asked me if I'd like to, you know, start exploring movement. And I was still pretty new to being disabled, um, only about five years in. And um, having been somebody who was really, really physical, um, I didn't really know how to relate to my body or being physical. So when she asked me that, I was a little like perplexed about what I would do and how I would move. And we just started working out of my chair and in my chair doing improvisational movement. And I got really hooked on being physical again. And um, that led me into martial arts. And um, I helped start a program for disabled women at Hand to Hand Kajakembo School in Oakland. And I had a wonderful Sifu there, Colleen Gregan, who really encouraged me to look at all of the aspects of movement um, and meditation that I could do. And in that uh, martial arts school, I met um, Axis's first um, artistic director, Thais Mazur. And she was a dancer um, and wanted to get a group of people with and without disabilities together to create one dance work, which we did. And we performed it in 1988 and we were all just hooked. Um, we were hooked on doing something that was really innovative and different. We didn't know anyone else in the world was doing it. Um, so I would say, you know, that those three women, um, Gail, Colleen, and Thais, really pushed me into being, you know, a physical mover again. And learning how to move in ways that weren't just about getting from point to point A to point B in my wheelchair. Um, it was really about being creative and, you know, developing my relationship to my body. Yeah. Um, so you were at Axis for over 30 years mm -hmm. and you've done a lot of advocacy and education work. 
Um, so was there any point in your career where you faced a challenge um, and how were you able to overcome that challenge? Yeah, there have been a lot of challenges. You know, when you're, when you're somebody who's very, very able and very um, identified with what one does physically, for me, it was riding horses. You know, when you go through a traumatic um, injury, it's really devastating. And um, I think, you know, one of the big challenges was just um, learning how to look at my, getting over my perception of myself as a disabled person was a huge challenge. And I think what really helped me in that was moving to Berkeley where there are so many disabled people because Berkeley is really the epicenter of the um, disability rights and independent living movement. And I started meeting other people who were disabled and were having really full successful lives. And you know that really helped me, but I was terrified of being in public and I really cared about what other people thought about me and what they thought about me as a disabled person. And you know that was a big challenge was just getting myself to um, go forward and I never would have expected to have found myself performing on a stage, you know, and presenting and teaching in front of people. Once we started AXIS, I think one of the biggest challenges was really convincing the world that we were a serious dance company and that just because there are people in, with disabilities in the company, we're not, we weren't doing therapy. We were really doing serious art and it took probably about 10 years to get the field to really understand that, you know, and then once we got over that hurdle and people started looking at us as a serious dance company, you know, a huge challenge was just continuing to grow and maintain, you know, a dance company of people with and without disabilities because um, having, you know, accessibility challenges, we did a lot of touring and, um, you know, we started before the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed. And so accessibility to theaters, um, traveling was really difficult. So, you know, we had all of the challenges that any other person starting a dance company and growing a dance company would have. But then we had a lot of additional challenges, you know, um, Dancing is not what wheelchair manufacturers thought one would be doing in a wheelchair. So we had the challenge of keeping our, you know, we, we use these every day. We didn't have specialized dance chairs or just a chair that we used for dance. Um, and so keeping our equipment running, keeping our bodies healthy, you know, keeping people happy, keeping money coming in, that was, that was a big job. Yeah, um, so, I know you retired in 2018 mm -hmm. and with the whole coronavirus pandemic, uh, what are you working on right now? Well, I retired from AXIS, but I have continued to be involved in the dance and disability field. So I helped start um, an affinity group um, through our national dance organization, Dance USA. And I've been co-chairing that, really focusing on how we continue to build the visibility of integrated dance and to make opportunities available for disabled people who want to dance. Um, so that's one of the things I'm doing, you know, still in the dance field. I'm also working on um, the Access Archives, which um, as you can imagine, after 30 years, there's, you know, a lot of material. And of course, we started this archiving project with an archiving uh, fellow um, last spring, and that was right during COVID. So um, the process has gotten more drawn out and we are hoping that we can kind of get all of our archives um, moved up to the UC Berkeley Bancroft Library this summer. But it remains to be seen, you know, how much we'll be able to do on site and in person. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing that I'm doing is, um, I love nature, as I said, I grew up in the mountains. Um, so I'm right now taking a course to become a California certified naturalist. 
I drive, um, I do animal transport for Oakland Animal Services and Feral Change, helping to get um, cats uh, spayed and neutered in the city of Oakland um, and beyond just to start to bring the population down and um, to make the world a little bit better place for our cats and our wildlife. Um, I also foster squirrels, baby squirrels. We just released our first group and I raise butterflies. So those are kind of the things that I, I do outside for fun. I did also start um, doing adaptive carriage driving. Um, so I drive horses in a carriage, though I didn't drive at all last year because of coronavirus, it's a little hard to be socially distant in a horse carriage. <laughs> so I've been managing to stay pretty busy. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Um, so you've done a lot of things, you know, um, you've helped uh, develop an internationally recognized dance company. Um, you've won a multitude of awards. You foster squirrels um, and you're working on becoming a naturalist. I think that's really cool. Um, but out of all of your accomplishments, what's one thing that you're the most proud of? Well, Axis' mission was to change the face of dance and disability through artistry, education, and advocacy. And I think what I'm most proud of is changing people's lives, you know, bringing people who wanted to dance but didn't feel like they had permission or a place to go or they thought they couldn't because they were disabled. Um, I think that that's been the most rewarding. You know, we perform and we performed as Axis still does perform for youth a lot. And I think being able to go into elementary schools and especially and really give people um, a picture of, you know, what disability really is and what people with and without disabilities can do when they collaborate together. So I think, I think just that, that whole engagement and um, you know, making the world look at people with disabilities and, and to look at dance differently. I think that's what I'm most proud of. Um, so yeah, like, Oh, like you mentioned, you've been able to meet a lot of different people, and I'm sure that you've been able to see people's perception of dance and disability change, but I'm sure there's still work to be done. Um, uh, so if there's one change that you'd like to see in our generation, like future generations, what would that change be? Um. I think what I'd love to see is for young people, especially young women, to really find their own person and be okay with being uniquely yourself. Um, you know, I'd love to see a movement away from materialism and commercialism and, you know, all of the things that we're told we're supposed to look like or be like in social media. You know, I really do see and I want to see even more, you know, your generation embracing difference and really finding power through collaboration with people who are really different than you, you know, and being proud of your identity. I mean, I'm very proud of being a disabled person. You know, it's it's not an easy thing to be in our society, um, even now. And, you know, I'm so proud of my disabled community and my disabled friends, and I want, you know, I, I want this generation to really um, recognize that disability is part of um, diversity and um, intersectionality, you know, and it gets less left out a lot. The disabled community gets left out a lot. Yeah. And, it, you know, it crosses all boundaries of race, age, class, religion, you know, gender, sexual orientation, disability is really non-discriminatory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think it's 
safe to say that you've made a significant impact in the dance world and just uh, and you've made you've been able to impact a lot of people with disability and change people's perception on disability and the potential of people with disabilities. Um, so my last question is, do you have any advice for youth who want to make a difference in their community? Yeah, I think I do. I, you know, be proud of your accomplishments, but stay humble and stay grateful. Um, be, you know, find ways to be of service. You know, follow a passion that really contributes to the betterment of the world, you know, and not just lining your own pockets, you know, and having that yacht and the huge house. And, you know, cause we're at a very, very critical time on our planet. Um, and it's important to take care of yourself and your community. And I think most of all, to take care of the planet and to protect the environment, you know, find your passion and, you know, get out in nature, you know, and see what's around and, you know, don't be afraid to, um, meet and interact with people who are different than you because there is a lot of power in collaboration across difference. That's really good advice. Thank you so much um, welcome. for coming here and speaking. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Well, thank you for asking me. I, I, um, I'm glad I had the opportunity and I wish you all um, the best of everything.